the story starts in Japan, and the citizens heard a huge explosion. They looked out of the window, and a shockwave was caused by a strong alien monster. Then he started to launch a second attack, and he destroyed some houses. The damage was enormous, and the government was warned that a great danger had emerged. Meanwhile, we see a reporter broadcast live and warn viewers about the monster. Then a mysterious guy left his home and he was on the way to beat up the enemy. Following this we see a girl crying and the strong alien appeared. In the last moment she was saved, and he was asked, who he is. So he said he is just a hobby hero without a backstory. Saitama learned that Vaccine Man is a monster, who planned to obliterate humans and their evil civilization. So Vaccine Man powered him up and told Saitama, that he didn't got a chance against him. Saitama wasn't scared and defeated him with one punch. He couldn't believe that his fight ended after one punch, and he was desperate. Followed we see three years earlier and Saitama met a crab man, he wondered why Saitama didn't run away. Mr. Crab said he ate expired Krabby Patties and he turned into a crab man. Suddenly Saitama replied, he is an unemployed man and he wasn't in the mood to run away, because he got rejected by a job interview. Mr. Krabs liked him, because his eyes was lifeless like his own eyes. Also he said he is interested to find a boy with a big chin, and he planned to gonna rip his arms off. Later, Saitama couldn't believe to see a big-chinned brat and asked him if he messed with a big crab monster. Saitama learned he drew something on him with a marker, and he didn't know if he should warn the boy. Suddenly, Mr. Krabs appeared and attacked him. Saitama instinctively saved the boy and told the boy to flee, but he refused and said he wants his soccer ball back. Mr. Krabs was furious, and Saitama asked him why he would kill a little boy for a harmless prank. He said it was fun hurting innocent people, and his pride felt hurt because the boy had pranked him. Saitama was insulted and he laughed, because he thought Mr. Krabs looks like a villain of an anime that he watched. Saitama was attacked, and he got the intention to kill the big-chinned brat. In that moment, Saitama remembered about his childhood dream to become a strong hero, and he challenged Mr. Krabs in real life to a fight. Mr. Krabs was furious and he beat up Saitama with his crab arms. He said he will end Saitama's life, but Saitama played the Uno reverse card, and he defeated Mr. Krabs. So Saitama won the fight and after that day he trained until he went bald. He became so powerful and no one could beat him since that day. In addition, he wondered why his heart felt so empty. Suddenly, a huge man stomped into the grocery store, leaving a huge footprint on the ground. Then we see an evil scientist, who turned his little brother into a gigantic monster. The reason was his little brother's goal was to become the strongest in the world. He trained every day, and his big brother produced the ultimate steroids called Biceps King. Following this, the scientist gave his litter brother his produced steroids, and he turned into a giant biceps creature. As a result, he planned to conquer the whole world with his little brother. Then the scientist looked forward and his little brother destroyed the towns. All residents were warned about a giant creature. The residents of City D ran away. After that, the scientist told his little brother that he is the strongest man in the world. Suddenly he noticed a man on his brother's shoulder. He commanded his little brother to kill him. But Steroids Man realized that he killed the wrong person. Then Steroids Man got angry and he threw Saitama like a toy into the ground. Saitama was attacked and he just waited until his enemy stopped the series of attacks. After that, the Steroids Man felt empty and Saitama felt his pain. After that, he punched his enemy in the face and Saitama knew overwhelming strength is pretty boring. He won the fight and went to a convenience store to buy groceries for his dinner. On the way home, he noticed that there is no signs that the evils of the world are disappearing. He wasn't sad about it, but something was bothering him. The reason is that in exchange for power, he lost his emotions and was bored every day. Then Saitama was insulted by a car monster, and he defeated him with a single punch again. Later he was sad, because he arrived home uninjured. As a result, he wished to find an enemy, who he can fight all out. In the followed morning, we see Saitama, who was attacked by a strong monster. So Saitama was shocked about his destroyed apartment and a monster showed up to attack him. However, his enemy said they are the true earthlings who plan to claim the world above ground. Then many of his friends appeared, and Saitama was threatened by them. He also said they had already eliminated 70% of the surface dwellers. So Saitama met finally strong opponents, and he was excited to fight against the subterraneans. He insulted them, and defeated the first monster with one punch. After that he looked forward for the battle against them. Saitama was attacked, and he was happy to go all out in the fight with them. Following this, they surrounded Saitama, and he used all his power to punch them. After a long fight, he was attacked by an enemy, who caused a huge explosion. The Earthlings thought it's over and they couldn't believe to meet such a strong man. Suddenly Saitama said he is just a hero for fun and said the surface is under his protection. 
the earthlings were angry and they attacked Saitama, but he dodged all of their attack. At that moment, Saitama realized he was excited like his first fight, and his heart started pounding. Later he noticed his emotions coming back to him, and the final boss showed up. He was angry, and Saitama rushed towards him to fight against the strong earthling king. Suddenly Saitama woke up, and he heard some noises outside. They called themselves the Subterranean. Saitama stamped at the Subterranean King, and thought he will experience a wild battle with them. Unfortunately, they gave up immediately and went back home. A few days passed and Saitama lived his boring life in his apartment. He watched TV, and he learned about mosquito outbreak in his town. After that he went outside to watering his plant, and he didn't saw the news about a dangerous swarm of mosquitoes. Then a mosquito landed on his hand. He smashed it, but the little mosquito didn't die. So he used all of his strengths and tried to kill the mosquito. In the meantime, all citizens were warned about the threat level demon. Then we see a handsome cyborg chasing the swarm of mosquitoes in the city of Z. Followed a thief used the time to steal valuables and he underestimated the warning about the mosquitoes. Suddenly swarm of mosquitoes appeared and he was confused. He was attacked and the mosquitoes sucked out all his blood. Out of nowhere we see a mosquito queen who wasn't delighted with the small amount of blood. Suddenly Genos appeared and he shot fire against the mosquito queen. He understood that she commanded all mosquitoes to suck out all blood of the humans, and she planned to suck out Genos. Following this she commanded all mosquitoes to suck out his blood, but he attacked her army with a fire blast. She couldn't believe that Genos had burned down all her beloved mosquitoes. In the meantime, Saitama thought he got the mosquito, but he failed. Then we see Genos, who started his next attack against the mosquito queen. She could withstand his attacks and Genos powered him up, he increased his power and launched a strong fire blast. The Mosquito Queen was able to dodge his attack and ripped of one of his arms. She looked down on Genos, but he ripped of her legs in just a short moment. However, she tried to escape, but Genos didn't let her flee and attacked her again. She understood that Genos is dangerous and commanded her Mosquito Gang to suck up all bloods of the animals. After that, Genos was ready to use all of his power to wipe her out. Out of nowhere Saitama appeared, who tried to kill a single mosquito with insect spray. He saw the swarm of Mosquito and Genos told him to run away. Saitama couldn't escape in time, and the Mosquito Queen prepared her next attack. In that moment, Genos used his cyborg power and burned down all mosquitoes with ease. He was sure about his victory, and the whole city was destroyed after his attack. Suddenly, Saitama thanked him for saving him, and he couldn't believe that Saitama was alive. After that, the Mosquito Queen laughed at him, and she was alive too. She evolved to Supercell Mosquito, and she attacked Jens with her super speed. Genos didn't manage to dodge her attack and he was badly injured. In addition, he realized that his enemy became more powerful after consuming the huge amount of blood. Then Genos decided to sacrifice his life and he activated his self-destruct mechanism. In the last moment, Saitama showed up and he just slapped her in the face. In the followed day, Genos visited his new master and Saitama thought he just made a joke. Saitama told him he wasn't looking for an apprentice and he wondered about his cyborg body. Then Genos thought his new master is a cyborg too and asked about his skin-colored armor on his head. Saitama felt bullied and Genos apologized for his rude words. Following this he told Saitama about his backstory, that his family died by an accident. So Saitama learned that a cyborg got out of control and he barely survived and became a cyborg himself to find and eliminate the evil cyborg. A few hours later he was annoyed hearing his long story, and he stopped Genos. In the meantime, another evil scientist learned that his prototype monster was wiped out. He got the idea to study Saitama as his new experiment, and he commanded his assistant to send him a bait. After that, Genos asked him to teach him to become strong like him. Saitama said he will surpass him, and he asked him if he is ready to handle his secret to become stronger. Suddenly, a mantis appeared, and Saitama defeated him with just one punch. Then we see more enemies outside. Genos jumped out the window, but Saitama had already defeated the other enemies. Out of nowhere he was attacked, but he said he is fine. Following this a cyborg appeared, and Genos wondered if he is the one who eliminated his family. Genos attacked him, and he asked the cyborg a few questions. Meanwhile Saitama was surrounded by two strong monsters, and they got the intention to beat him up. Genos worried about his master, but he needed to focus on his own fight. So Genos used his fire attacks but the enemy withstand his attacks. The cyborg said they were sended from the house of evolution. Then we see Saitama he was bored and he said the ground is the perfect place for a nap. The beast king thought he is stupid and he insulted Saitama, 
so Saitama showed them they are the weaklings and he noticed that his suit was dirty. The Beast King was angry and he wanted to show him his true power. He attacked Saitama and slayed his own teammates. Followed, he turned into a high-ranking monster and increased his power. Saitama dodged all his attack with ease and he wasn't feared. Finally, he launched an attack too. As a result, Saitama defeated the strong Beast King with his normal punches. One of the enemy's teammate tried to flee, but Saitama found him. Then we see Genos interrogated the cyborg gorilla, and he said Genos didn't stand a chance against the second strongest warrior of their team. However, he learned the Beast King was defeated and apologized for being rude. Following this, we learned about a scientist who had lived a long time ago. He was a genius, and he was able to make a number of contributions to human knowledge. However, he became disillusioned with the world. Also, none of his ideas ever received even the slightest support from the scientific community. He had a plan to evolve humanity, but his plan failed because his idea was deemed dangerous. So Genius decided to pursue his dream at any cost. After he turned 70 years, his efforts began to yield results. Following this, Genius cloned himself and called his laboratory House of Evolution. Suddenly, Saitama stopped the story and asked what he had to do with him. They threatened Cyborg Gorilla to summarize the story, and he apologized. So Cyborg Gorilla explained that his boss had become very curious about Saitama's body, but he wasn't into men. Genos explained his master that the scientist is a weirdo and they needs to eliminate him. Saitama agreed and he said they need to hurry because there are a sale on tomorrow for the new PlayStation. Before Genos left, he asked Cyborg Gorilla if there were more cyborgs in the House of Evolution. Cyborg Gorilla replied he was the only combat cyborg. Meanwhile, Genius and his clones were shocked that Saitama and Genos defeated their elite force. Also, they found out that they were on the way to destroy his laboratory. Genius said they should prepare for the release of Carnage Kabuto. All clones were scared, but their leader said they had no other choice. Then we see Saitama and Genos running towards the evil scientist's hideout. Genos was sure that Saitama could fly, but he replied that humans are not born with the ability to fly. Later they arrived at the House of Evolution. Genos immediately activated his cyborg abilities and pulverized the entire building. Saitama learned that Genos thought it was the most efficient way to destroy them all in one swoop. After that, they found an underground basement. Then we see a clone fighting against a monster, but he couldn't survive and Monster Kabuto wiped him out. A short time later, Genius appeared in the room and he greeted his created monster. Kabuto was a bully and complained that he was locked up his whole life. The scientist said he was locked up because his mentally is unstable. So Kabuto got even more angry and said he is the ultimate creature that every had sought. Then the scientist asked him for a favor and made a deal with Kabuto. He offered to free him if he managed to capture the two strong enemies. Followed we see Saitama and Genos sensed a living being deeper in the hideout. Kabuto appeared out of nowhere and smashed Genos with his monster power. Saitama was shocked to see Genos smashed into the walls. After that he was challenged to a duel by Kabuto. They decided to fight in the biggest room of the facility, and Kabuto underestimated his opponent. Suddenly Genos appeared, and Kabuto was surprised that he is still alive. Genos attacked Kabuto with strong fire blasts and showed him his true power. Kabuto looked down on him and he withstand his machine gun blow. Saitama told his apprentice that he shouldn't push himself, but he refused. Then Genos used his last energy, but his attack was reflected back. Saitama was furious that he screwed up Genos' crispy haircut. Meanwhile, Genius tried to escape and he was badly injured. He remembered that he always been critical of humans their inferior abilities. He remembered that he was 15 when it occurred to him. Since that day, he started to create his plan to evolve the human beings. Unfortunately, he hadn't planned for a bald guy in a Fashion Nova men's suit to get in his way. But he was sure that his strongest creature was able to defeat the hobby hero. Saitama then started running towards Kabuto and asked if he is the ultimate weapon of the House of Evolution. Kabuto looked down on him and he showed Saitama his enormous speed. Following this, he sensed a dangerous aura, and his instincts told him to run away. Kabuto was shocked by his opponent, because all his instincts warned him not to attack Saitama. As a result, he asked Saitama how he got so powerful. Saitama was surprised about his question, and he told Genos to listen carefully too. Following this, he noticed that the scientist genius was behind him. Genos thought it's too risky letting these guys know Saitama's secret. However, Saitama told them his secret about his enormous power. Saitama said he trained for years and did 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 100 squats. He also ran 10 kilometers every day and ate like a bodybuilder. In the beginning, he thought he will die by his intense training, but he didn't give up. 
He kept doing his training and a year later he was bald. As a result, he gained super strength and was able to surpass himself. They couldn't believe what Saitama said and thought he was joking. So Genos yelled at him and he said he just did standard strength training. Also he said he didn't ask to study under him just to hear jokes. Saitama was aware that Genos might not believe him, but he was telling the truth. Suddenly Kabuto got angry too and called Saitama a liar. He increased his power and turned into a dangerous monster. Kabuto was in his final form and he got the plan to murder Saitama with his enormous strength. Following this he prepared his attack and Saitama was deep in thought. So Saitama was punched in his face and he flew around the room. He ignored the facts that Kabuto threw him like his toy. He thought that he made a horrible mistake because Kabuto said he will be on a rampage for a whole week. However, Saitama realized that he can't let Kabuto on rampage for several weeks and Genius thought he got no chance against Kabuto. Then Saitama realized he will disturb his bargain day at the supermarket. As a result, he defeated Kabuto with one punch. Following this, Genos told Genius why he made such a fuss. The reason was that today was the bargain day he was looking forward to. Genos tried to calm him down, and he told him that if they hurry, they would make it in time. In the days that follow, we see a man complaining because the rich are getting richer, and the poor are being punished by society. Hammerhead wanted to change society and tried to get people on his side with his speech in order to create an utopia. Unfortunately, none of the people were interested in his talk, and he got mad. They then stood in front of a wealthy investor's building, and Hammerhead was jealous. He ordered his subject to demolish the rich investor's building. The building immediately collapsed, and everyone in the area fled from the villains. After that, one of Hammerhead's crew member told him they destroyed the wrong building. Then we see the hero, Moomin Rider, who helped a little boy with his problem. The little boy was grateful that he had pulled his balloon down from the tree. Meanwhile, Saitama woke up and he had a nightmare about a person who wanted to play rock scissor paper with him. Saitama realized it was just a dream and he watched TV. He learned about the B-class criminal Hammerhead, who destroyed many buildings in City F. Saitama brushed his teeth and he didn't care about Hammerhead. Suddenly he found out that all group members shaved their hair, and he felt offended because they stole his look. Saitama decided to punish them, and he wanted to crush them all into the ground. Following this, we see City F and Hammerhead cause trouble with his group. Out of nowhere, the bicyclist for Justice Moomin Rider appeared. He challenged Hammerhead but didn't stand a chance and lost the fight. After that, Investor Zaniru was warned about the terrorist, but he refused to run away. Suddenly his bodyguard showed up and Investor Zaniru was glad to see Sonic. Sonic said he will handle it, and they didn't need to worry. So Sonic said he's going to knock them out and break all their bones. Then we see Hammerhead and his group heading to Zaniru's building and planning to destroy his home. Suddenly Speeda Sonic showed up, and he said that none of his enemies could escape alive. Hammerhead commanded his followers to attack Sonic, but he possessed Trafalgar Law's Devil Fruit and severed their heads from their bodies. So everyone was easily defeated by Sonic, and everyone was confused because Sonic was way too fast. Hammerhead was scared, and he tried to protect himself with his battlesuit power. Sonic looked down on him, and he was attacked by a huge rock. Meanwhile, Satama was mistaken for a criminal. Then we see Sonic again, and he was surprised that his opponent didn't try to flee. He dodged all of Hammerhead's attacks, and Hammerhead insulted him. Then Hammerhead said he fall for his trap, but Sonic wasn't afraid because he was sure to win. Sonic rushed towards his opponent, and he increased his speed while running towards him. Hammerhead said he got him and thought he had smashed Sonic into the ground. Out of nowhere Sonic defeated Hammerhead from behind, and he reported his client that his job is done. Then he noticed that Hammerhead's body disappeared. He managed to escape as his skull was always thicker than that of a normal human. Then we see Saitama, who was looking for him. In the meantime, Genos was repaired by Dr. Kusano, and he told about his new master who saved him. Genos was grateful that Saitama saved his life twice, and Dr. Kusano was happy to see Genos had found a good friend. Then Dr. Kusano said he built a new set of augmentations, and when it's done he could definitely surpass his master. After that, we see Hammerhead thinking that Saitama wanted to join his group. Suddenly, Saitama was attacked, and Hammerhead was shocked that his punch didn't work. Saitama said his battle suit looks lame and he insulted Hammerhead. So he got angry and increased his power to launch another attack with full power. At that moment, Saitama remembered using this move all the time as a kid, and he easily stopped Hammerhead. Saitama realized that his enemy was a lot like him, and he destroyed his battle suit. Then Hammerhead asked to spare him, and Saitama said he would spare him if he stopped doing evil deeds. 
Later Saitama was on the way home and Sonic appeared, who was looking for Hammerhead. Suddenly Saitama was attacked, but he dodged all of Sonic's attacks. Saitama noticed that he was mistaken for a follower of Hammerhead and tried to clear up the misunderstanding. Sonic didn't believe him, saying his bald head proves otherwise. Then Sonic told him about his backstory, that he is a ninja, who had been perfecting his techniques since childhood. His pride was hurt when Saitama twice dodged his attacks. Saitama thought he just wants to try out his moves on him. Following this, Sonic showed Saitama his speed, but he wasn't impressed. Saitama was bored, and he asked Sonic if he could go home. Sonic couldn't accept that Saitama could see through his attacks and tried to hit him with a kick. However, Saitama dodged his kick and he accidentally hit his nuts. He said sorry, and Sonic felt a lot of pain. A short time later, Sonic learned his opponent's name and said next time, he will end his life. Saitama couldn't take him seriously and wished him good luck. In the evening Saitama told the story about Sonic, and Genos didn't knew him either. Then Saitama got angry because he realized that nobody knows him as a hero. Genos was shocked by Saitama's problem because he defeated countless monsters and was still an unknown hero. He wished to become a popular hero. Genos remembered that another hero got the credits for defeating Hammerhead in his group. Suddenly Genos found a way to help Saitama and he told him about the Hero Association. That's how Saitama came up with the idea of registering with his friend Genos in the Hero Association. Later we see two cyborgs who tried to murder Hammerhead, but he was alive because of his thick skull. Then we see Saitama filling out registration forms while watching the news. He knew one wrong step and he would end it like Hammerhead with his life. In the following day, we see the Hero Association and they decided that Moomin Rider will remain the top-ranked Class C hero. Then they discussed the official hero test. Unfortunately, they had a problem that the quality of the applicants decreases every year and they plan to evaluate the candidates more critically. Then we see many candidates preparing for the exam. They warmed up and Saitama was underestimated by the other candidates. After that, the first fitness test began and Saitama did his side jumps. After that, Saitama had to sprint and lift weights. Saitama almost destroyed the whole building with his enormous powers and he managed to get the highest scores everywhere. Later, Saitama was waiting for the results and his buddy Genos showed up. He asked his friend how it was and he said both tests were easy. Genos said that the written test was very easy and anyone can get full points on it. An hour later they got the results and Genos was certified as a S-class hero. Saitama also thought he was an S-class hero and Genos congratulated him. Then he asked his master about an interview because Genos was asked about the House of Evolution. The Hero Association asked him if he had destroyed the entire building. They were happy to learn that he wiped out the criminals and Genos was registered as an official S-class hero. Meanwhile, Saitama learned that he is actually a C-class hero. Genos mistook the top half of the sea, and Genos planned to clear up the misunderstanding, but Saitama said it would only make him more embarrassed. Then we see a guy he was notified that Genos was certified as a S-class hero. The popular and handsome hero stared at his picture and was already planning to meet him someday. Later we see Saitama and Genos in the lecture hall. A-class hero Snake looked down on them and told them to take their hero status seriously. Suddenly he got angry because Saitama wasn't listening to him. A-class hero Snake tried to intimidate him and performed a weird TikTok dance. Saitama had other problems as his gum was stuck to his face, and Genos asked if he was alright. In the evening they went home, and Genos told his master more about the Hero Association. Saitama wasn't really interested in the Hero Association, and Genos was already looking forward to working together as a hero with his master. Also Genos said he is now officially his disciple, and Saitama realized that Genos will cause him a lot of trouble in the future. Meanwhile, Snake complained about the two new heroes, and thought they are amateurs. But a government leader contradicted him, saying that the two are not weak. He told Snake that Saitama barely passed the written exam, but he almost destroyed the entire building on the fitness test. Snake couldn't believe that a stupid guy like Saitama could be stronger than him. Then we see Saitama, he realized that Genos is pretty awesome because he was among the top tier heroes. Suddenly Snake showed up, and he tried to lecture Saitama. He attacked Saitama with a weird technique, but his attack failed. A few days later they were on a mountain and Genos told him that they are both ranked last. Then he said after performing more heroic acts, they will acquire hero names. Saitama hoped he didn't get a stupid nickname like Caped Baldi. After that, Genos thanked him that he agreed to his unreasonable request. Saitama wanted to help Genos get stronger and was willing to practice with him. Genos told his master that he wants to fight with him all out. However Genos launched his first attack, 
and Saitama dodged his kick. Genos launched more powerful attacks against his master, and Saitama jumped into the sky. Suddenly, Saitama was shot down with a laser beam that pulverized part of the mountain. Saitama wasn't injured, and Genos increased his speed. Following this Saitama increased his speed too, and Genos didn't manage to hit his master. He was faster than Genos and disappeared. So Genos located him and found him running away. Genos activated all of his cannons and aimed at Saitama, but he appeared behind him. Then Genos said that he would like to fight Saitama all out, and that he shouldn't hold back. Genos was aware that Saitama's powers knew no limits and that he could be destroyed in one blow. So Saitama showed him his full power and Genos felt the bloodlust of his punch. Saitama attacked him, but he stopped his punch before hitting his apprentice. After that, Genos was stunned, and he realized that Saitama is a monster, because he destroyed the mountain behind them. Then we see hero Amai mask, he found out about Genos' location, and went off. In the meantime, Saitama had dinner, and he challenged Genos to a duel over udon noodles. A few moments later, the restaurant owner was stunned, because Genos had eaten a whole bucket full of udon noodles. Suddenly Amai mask entered the noodle restaurant and he talked to Genos. Saitama warned his friend that he might be a rookie crusher like Snake. They went outside and Genos asked him why he wants to talk with him. Saitama was worried about Genos and wondered if he is alright. A few minutes later, Genos returned to the noodle restaurant and Saitama thought he defeated Amai Mask. Genos told him that he just welcomed him and a fan of Amai Mask asked to shake his hands. On the way home, Saitama was surprised that S-Class and C-Class heroes are treated differently. Meanwhile, Genos recalled the words of Amai Mask. He said that a professional hero must always be a beautiful symbol of justice. Genos thought that Amai Mask was looking for a fight, but he stopped him and gave him some advice for the future as a member of the heroes. In the end, Amai Mask said he expect great things from him. After that, Genos said goodbye, and Saitama got a strange feeling hearing his words. In addition, we see Amai Mask and he had found interest in Genos. Later, Genos showed up at Saitama's apartment and asked if he could move in with him. Saitama refused, but Genos convinced him with a huge amount of money. A few days have passed since Genos moved into his master's apartment, and Saitama wondered what his student was writing down. Saitama was aware that Genos was smarter than him and didn't know what to teach him. Suddenly, Genos said that if he doesn't do hero activities regularly, his name will be removed from the hero registry. Saitama said that he watched the news every day, and no disaster was reported. So Genos explained that the reporters don't cover ordinary crimes. Saitama couldn't believe that he was only now finding out about the rules. Saitama then tried to act smart, but he didn't know how he could help Genos become stronger. Suddenly he saw a magazine, and recommended that Genos should try to become one of the top 10 heroes. Then he went looking for a criminal, and ran all over the city. Unfortunately, he couldn't find any criminals because the city was quiet all day. Saitama's attempt to catch a criminal failed, and he went home. The following day Saitama was nervous because the city was quiet again. Suddenly he was attacked by Sonic, and Saitama recognized the guy. Unfortunately, he couldn't remember his name and said he didn't have time to play with him. Feeling offended, Sonic attacked Saitama with his sword, but Saitama destroyed his sword. Saitama told him he was busy, and Sonic was afraid of Saitama's aura. Suddenly, Tank Top Tiger was reported that a criminal causing problems in the city. So Saitama thought Sonic would be mistaken for a criminal, but he was wrong. He tried to clear up the misunderstanding, but Tank Top Tiger said he had never heard of him as a hero. Then Saitama was taught that he shouldn't threaten people anymore. Tank Top Tiger tried to provoke Saitama to make him look good in front of all townspeople. Out of nowhere he was attacked by Sonic. All the people were scared and ran away. Sonic asked him if he would run away as a hero, or if he had the courage to stand up and fight. So he attacked Saitama with his shurikens, but Saitama dodged his attacks. He told Sonic to stop his attack, but he didn't listen to him. In the last moment Saitama saved a little boy and he was furious. He said he is busy and haven't time to play with Sonic's stupid games. Following this he noticed that Sonic was a bad guy and he knocked him out. In the followed day the Hero Association learned that Sonic was involved in several assassination. After that, S-Class Heroine Tornado appeared in the Hero Association office. She learned about the investigation in City Z and she was angry for some reasons. But they managed to calm her down, and Tornado said they will regret it to turn down her offer. A few days later we see the Hero Association HQ, and they were reported that Watchdog Man investigated City Q. They all knew that City Q is a hot zone with more casualties and monsters than any other area. Then they discussed about the other cities, and they said nothing bad happened. 
Following this they said sometimes, strong monsters appeared at level catastrophe, but they were eliminated. Suddenly, a man asked about City Z because he noticed that there was a lot of potential for a disaster to break out there. However, one of the council members said they had sent two A-class heroes to investigate City Z, so Golden Ball and Spring Mustachio were on the way to investigate the City Z. The two heroes looked around the city and planned to go to an abandoned place. When they arrived at a locked entrance, they were aware that they could be attacked at any time. Golden Ball asked if his colleague knew why the monster rate in this area was so high. Spring Mustachio knew nothing and Genos noticed that two guys entered his hood. Genos sensed that they are chasing something and cleaned the toilet. After that we see a seaweed monster, who heard about a strong monster in the ghost town. Then the two heroes discovered the seaweed monster and they planned to strike him down. Golden Ball shot a rocket, but his attack was reflected. Suddenly he was attacked by the seaweed monster. Spring Mustachio was worried about his friend, but he was attacked too. He managed to dodge his opponent's attack and performed a magic trick. Following this, he fought against the monster with his sword skills. Spring Mustachio managed to block all of his attacks. He then prepared to make a sword attack and pierce the monster. The seaweed monster didn't want to be turned into sushi and just jumped away. So Spring Mustachio was impressed that his opponent dodges his attack and he realized that he needs to call for help. He then contacted the Heroes Association and asked for help. After that, the seaweed monster said he was from another town and he heard about a monster in the ghost town. In the meantime, a call for help was sent to the Hero Association consulting team and they learned that the two A-class heroes were in trouble. They tried to send nearby heroes to the ghost town as reinforcements. Then we see Spring Mustachio, he had no more strength and fell unconscious. A short time later, the seaweed monster discovered Saitama, he was on his way home to cook dinner. Saitama was attacked, and he remembered that he had forgotten to buy seaweed. Later Genos learned that Saitama bought seaweed for a cheap price. Genos pointed out to him that seaweed is good for hair growth, and he hurt Saitama's feelings. Later the Hero Association reported that the two A-class heroes were taken to the hospital seriously injured, but the monster was defeated by a mysterious person. Afterwards, the S-class heroine Tornado also found out about the case. She yelled at the man, who initially refused her request to investigate the ghost town. We then see a group of heroes investigating the crime scene and wondering which monster had caused the enormous damage. Also they found seaweed on the crime scene. In addition, many rumors were spread about a strong monster in Ghost Town, 